what's going on everybody welcome back to the channel in today's video we're going to do something completely different totally new in 2024 we're going to be reviewing a new car not just any car but a 2024 Hyundai Sonata N-Line if you're shopping for a mid-size sedan then you're going to want to watch this video so you can learn all about what this car has to offer and if it's going to be the right choice for you let's not waste any time and let's jump right into it Before we jump into this video, I don't really share too much with you guys as far as my personal life. I'm fairly reserved and private when it comes to my personal life. I typically try to keep this lighthearted, chill, you know, I try to give you guys, you know, my honest opinion about stuff that, you know, I purchase in my life. I guess I want to take a minute to just talk about this kind of souvenir I got in my finger. I'm not giving you guys the finger finger, I'm showing you my finger. and. Kind of how this vehicle came to my life and why we're reviewing it today so this is my personal vehicle i've had it for about seven days i just bought it last week about a month ago i was in a serious car accident put a picture up here if you kind of want to see the aftermath of that vehicle and you know it, it definitely messed me up physically uh, i think more mentally than anything i've never really been in a serious car accident like that before it's been tough to grasp how vulnerable you are on the road and how quickly things could change. You know, it's hard to think about, you know, that you can be going to work one day and you might not come home. You know, I've always been pretty calm, pretty comfortable on the road. And then my son will be driving in a year. So uh, needless to say, my anxiety has gone way up. So, you know, it's been an adjustment trying to, you know, get back on track and things. It's crazy out in these roads. I've seen people drive like they're in the Fast and the Furious movies, like they're playing a GTA game and they got nine lives, uh, you know, weaving in out of lanes, going hundred miles per hour, you know, cutting people off all the time and just, you know, complete reckless driving. I don't know if you know this, but here in the United States, uh, since 2018, you know, car accidents have been up significantly, like 16%. And there's like over 40,000 motor vehicle fatalities each year. So it's pretty serious. And I just quickly want to say, talk to your friends, talk to your family, just tell them to slow down a little bit, pay more attention to the road, you know, take a little more time to leave a little bit earlier in the day, try not to rush. You know, we all have a million places to be and there's always so much going on in our daily lives, but you know, we got to get to our destination safely. Can't put other people in harm's way or, you know, anybody else in the vehicle. And hopefully you take this serious as well, especially your loved ones and friends. We're all on the same roads together. We all share the same roads and it's up to us to make a difference. And also I still owe you an S24 full review you. I'm sorry, but I literally got this phone and got my car accident. So I haven't had the time to give you that full review. I promise it's coming. Other than that, thanks for coming to my tech talk. Let's jump into the rest of this video. All right, we're going to get started with the exterior on this car. But first I want to say the 2024 Hyundai Sonata N-Line. The MSRP is about shy of about 35K here in the United States. And their direct competitors would be, you know, the Toyota Camry or Honda Accord. Anyway, here in the front on the bumper and the grill, you can see it's very wide. It's got a lot of holes, a lot of airflow going into it. Then you have this LED kind of strip that runs all the way across. You also have the N-Line badging there to the right hand corner and you'll see that pretty much throughout the whole car They do include a little bit of badging here and there now shifting to the sides of the vehicle starting with the wheels You have 18 inch rims. It's like a black and silver. I think they look okay for stock rims You'll definitely find better ones in aftermarket, but for stock ones, I think they're pretty fair Unfortunately on the brake calipers, I think they could have painted that maybe red or yellow I think it would look way better and then on both sides you have this LED flashers with the N-Line badging also in the side view mirror there's no power folding it's manual i think that was a misstep by hyundai and i really wish they included it on this model this is the portofino gray color i really like it and at nighttime it just shines and glistens and below the doors there's this lip that kind of contours to the car i think it looks aggressive sleek and modern this is really what sold me on this car is it kind of looks like it has a body kit on a stock car i think it looks amazing and i think they really did a good job designing the look of this vehicle on the exterior now on the rear side of the vehicle you have dual tip exhaust very minimal badging here you just have the Hyundai H sign and then the Sonata there's nothing else which I do appreciate and then on the brake lights you have this solid red line that goes across and then on the left and right hand side you have these pixel lights which would be your reverse when you do back up the vehicle and then you have your rear view camera here as well so and then on the trunk you have this black lip that kind of hangs over just a little bit it runs all the way across from left to right and then you have these little fins on each end and then over here as well kind of helps with aerodynamics and up to open the trunk you do have a little button here when the car is unlocked 
just press that. It does have kind of a spring action, so it does open itself. You don't have to physically push it up. And the trunk has plenty of room. You shouldn't have any problems putting bags or boxes in there. You can definitely fit a whole lot of things in there. All right, so let's check under the hood real quick. Nice spring action on the hood. No worries about lifting it up or closing it. Real easy and simple. This is a 2.5 liter turbo engine. Pumps out 291 horsepower and 311 pounds of torque. And can hit zero to 60 in about five seconds. There's also different driving modes that you can select, which I'll show you later. This is an eight speed wet dual clutch transmission. Forward wheel drive only in this model. And you do have more vents here that pull in air into the intake. And depending on how you drive, the MPG is 23 city, 32 highway, and 27 combined on this vehicle. And if you want to hear what the exhaust sounds like, here it is. All right, so now let's jump into the interior. We're gonna start here with the back seats. So just for reference, I'm about 5'10", 5'11", and I'm sitting here in the middle seat. Not a whole lot of room here. If you are six feet or over, you're not gonna have a fun time sitting back here. Your head is definitely gonna hit the top of the ceiling. Now, as far as knee space goes, I set up uh, the two seats here, the driver's side, I put about halfway back, and then the passenger, I slid it all the way back, kind of get an idea here of the amount of knee space I have in between these two seats. When it's all the way back, you're definitely gonna be knocking your knees if you have long legs on the driver's side you know if the person doesn't go all the way back you should have plenty of room here i also quickly want to mention there's no rear vents here no venting no airflow back here unfortunately and you do have two usb-c ports here and on the doors you have some nice trim here you have the speakers here you have your window button pretty standard on both ends and behind my head there are three speakers and in the middle here you have a center console which is kind of like a tray and your cup holders and it can also act as an armrest as far as the spacing goes if you're under six foot you should be okay over six foot and eh, you might have some issues and you might be a little bit uncomfortable all right so now i'm sitting in the driver's seat and we're going to talk about the front cabin here and what these seats look like and how they feel and once again you have an end line badge here and this material is kind of like a synthetic of leather and cloth blended together it's pretty soft and it has this red trim all the way around the seat it does have this racing design to it all right so here on the steering wheel you can see the end line badging down here and then and of course, we still have that red stitching running all the way across. You'll see that and mostly here on the interior. Tons of buttons here. We're not going to go through everything, but you do have a lot of functionality here. You can answer calls, you know, raise or lower your volume. You can change your different audio sources. You can do voice commands. On this side, you have your smart cruise control and then lane assist and then different menus that you can view your vehicle information. You got your headlights here, pretty standard wipers on this side. What really blew my mind on this car is now they have what they call a drive driving column there's no more of the stick you know driving shift that you would usually find down over here in the middle of your console all you have here is kind of this column here and you flip this kind of it's kind of like a rocker switch you can flip it down to go to reverse and you flip it up to go all the way up to drive very simple uh, very convenient i actually am liking it a lot more than the old school traditional shifter here in the middle of the console another thing to mention there's no heated steering wheel on the end line and on the driver door panel you have all the standard things of you know the windows unlocking and locking and your power mirrors and all that fun stuff and this is equipped with the bose sound system here are your power seat adjustment controls this is the only seat that's powered the passenger is manual also there's no memory seating now we're going to shift over here to the center console you have two usb-c ports and a 12 volt port as well and wireless charging down here here you have a drive mode where you can select you know between sport normal or eco there's another button here called auto hold so what happens is if you enable this the car will automatically brake when you come to a stop. You don't need to hold your foot on the brake anymore if you don't want to. And this is the rear view camera button. So you can turn it on if you want to see what's behind you for any reason. You can do that easily by pressing that button. And you do have a little bit of storage here where this wireless charger is, you know, a little, little car compartment here. You have your two cup holders. And then here in the back is really the only storage you have that's kind of like hidden. There's no tray or anything. I really wish they incorporated some type of tray where you can put small things in like a wallet or keys you know whatever you know change but it's really just a empty space there's really no organization that you can do here i wish they would have put a little bit more thought into that so moving above the console you do have some physical buttons here you could do your 
volume and you're seeking through your radio. And on the climate control, you can raise or lower this with physical buttons. And then this is a screen. You'll see here in a little bit when I turn it on and there are some like buttons that you can touch. It's just digital and it's touch sensitive. Moving up here, this is your push to start. And then on the vents here, you have a nice red trim running all the way across left compartment. And then above that, you have this giant long running infotainment center thing going on here. On this side, you'll see that is the instruments and your speed and clusters and all that stuff. And on the right side, this is your multimedia, your radio, and it is compatible with Android audio and CarPlay. And I do like how they integrated a speaker here right next to the screen. And if you haven't noticed, underneath the infotainment center, you have this carbon fiber trim that runs all the way to the passenger side and then ends over here on the driver's side. Now, before I turn the car, this is what I want to show you here is all of these fingerprints and smudges you can see from me touching it and messing with it. This is definitely a finger magnet you're going to have to wipe off if it bothers you. Another thing I forgot to mention, I really wish they put the carbon fiber trim here as well. I think it would have matched with everything else going on here, especially running across the dash here. Another small thing, a detail that I wish Hyundai would have put into this car. On the carpet mats, I really wish they put another N-Line logo there in the corner or something. I really think it would have matched really well with the rest of the car. Let's turn on the car and let's keep going. Alrighty, here we go. All right, so now that vehicle's on, you can see this giant infotainment center. It's actually two separate screens. They're 12 inch LCD screens. So you have one for your instruments like I talked about and the other one for your multimedia stuff. Now, what I wish they did, so you can see here, this is kind of just like dead space here in between the two screens. I don't know why they didn't have another speaker, make, maybe made this one a little bit less and then put another one in between here. I think it would have looked much better. I think it would have gave it more of that, you know, your own personal driving experience here. I think that was another big misstep here. I think I would have put a speaker there if I was designing this car. Now there is some ambient light that you can customize. I do have it set to red. You can kind of see it here running along the infotainment center. And then there's also another one that runs along this panel here. And the same thing on this end. I'll probably show some nice shots so you can see what that looks like. All right, so I'm gonna show you how this driving stick column works. So I'm holding the brake down. And if I just flick it halfway there, it'll go into neutral. If I go all the way up, goes into drive and if I go all the way down goes into reverse now in order to put it back into park there's actually a little button here that says P for park all you got to do is press that and boom that's it it's back into park you have heated seats on the driver and passenger and you can easily turn that on with these arrows now in the infotainment center I want to show you just a couple things there's a lot of things in here I'm not gonna go through everything but here's kind of the main menu you know you can do a voice memo that you use the voice command button you can create your own voice memos if you're driving and you need to remember something you can get weather there's a valet mode and then Hyundai pays a new thing they're releasing on these new 2024 models you can sign up and you can pay for gas and like fast food you know essentially you just press the button and it links to your account once you sign up for it and then it's going to be available in like over 60,000 retailers that you can pay directly through your car that should be interesting and I'm really excited to try that out and then this other menu you can get diagnostics you can get your maintenance there's HD radio notification online menu right from here if you need to view it now I just want to go into setup I'm going to show you some of the safety features that come with this vehicle real quick all right so here in this menu this is where you can see all of these safety features and you can turn each one of these off if you like you have a speed limit warning so if you're going above the speed limit it'll start beeping at you driver attention warning so for instance if you're not paying attention and the vehicle in front of you starts leaving it'll beep a little bit driving safety is your blind spot monitoring and then if you are approaching a vehicle at a high rate of speed it'll actually start warning and slow the vehicle down if it feels like you're gonna be in a, in a situation where you can have an, a collision on parking safety if you start parking and something is coming in your vicinity like a kid or a bike it'll start beeping at you and the driving convenience is that smart cruise control here are the different driving modes that you can select and you can also adjust the steering you also have the ability to set up a wi-fi hotspot the ui is snappy and responsive and almost feels like a phone and on your instruments you can customize this to a couple of templates there's different colors and there's a simple and a classic look to it so now here in the ceiling you have some lighting controls that you can turn on and off so you have honda's blue link which you can call emergency services with that sos button but it's also an app where you can get uh, more more information about the vehicle you can control the car from the app and we'll go into that in a little bit now what's really awesome is this panoramic roof check this out
can't wait for the summer to use this more often. Now let's say we want to keep the window closed and leave the shade open so we can get a lot more light in here. You can do that. So I have the shade all the way open, but this, the panoramic sunroof is closed and it brings in a lot more light. I love that. All right, we're here in the Hyundai Blue Link app that I was talking about. Here you can see how much fuel you have, estimated mileage. You can start the car, you can lock it, unlock it, start the climate. If you want to turn on the heat or AC, whatever you want to do, flash on the lights, a horn, you know, all that stuff. You can see the location of the vehicle and the vehicle status. It'll tell you when it's parked or moving. But what's what I really like is you can actually see what you left open. For instance, if you ran into the house or a store and you left a window, something open, you can check your app and let's say you're like, oh shoot, did I leave it open or not? You can easily know whether or not you left it open right here in the app. You can also have a digital key. So for instance, if you don't have your fob with you, actually, I don't think I showed you the fob. Hang on, I'll show you the fob after this, but you can set up a digital key through the app so you can use your phone to unlock your car. Other than that, you can get a lot of other maintenance and health status here, and you can tell when you need to set it up for service. I'm really liking this app so far, and I think it's really cool that I'm able to see what exactly is open and closed on the vehicle without having second guess it. Here's a fob. It looks like a little mini UFO. It's kind of big. You have your unlock, lock. You can also remote start with this button, and then you're, you know, flashing your horns and lights with that one. And then the side here, you also have your trunk unlock. I'm a fan of the interior. I think the seats are pretty comfortable. I do appreciate physical buttons and being able to press something, not just messing with an actual, you know, touch screen in order to change things and do things. Seatbelt first, guys. Let's go. Almost forgot to put my glasses on because I'm blind. I know you guys are really want to hear this engine. I'm not going to slam on the gas. I'm not going to do anything crazy. I don't know if you saw, but I have about 450 miles and any new car you're supposed to break in supposed to ease into it you're not supposed to drive it too heavy you know i definitely want this car to last the long run so i'm not trying to beat it up so i'm not going to be slamming on the gas for y'all sorry if you're looking for a zero to 60 video this is not for you go watch another one i'm going to give it some gas here so you can hear that engine purring and you can feel what i'm feeling somewhat it picks up I mean, you can hear that turbo kicking in. It definitely will pick up if you press on that gas. I really like the pickup on it. Acceleration is really smooth. And the engine sounds a little meaty. I do enjoy that little growl that it has when it picks up. You know, it's kind of like it has that power hidden there whenever you need it. And, you know, the car doesn't feel too bouncy, you know, going over bumps or anything. You know, I, I think the car seems really low to the ground as far as a stock car. You know, it definitely handles really well. I'm gonna stay a little bit quiet here for a few seconds just in case you wanna hear what the interior sounds like and while you're driving you know for me that's pretty important i don't like things rattling i don't like to hear a lot of noises you know coming from inside or outside the car so just soak it in and let me know what you think And while braking, it's pretty smooth. It stops where you need it to, which is very important. So wrapping up this video here is getting a little chilly out here for me. Personally, I do like the vehicle. Of course, I, I bought it. I had to like it. You can't beat the way this car looks. I mean, it looks very sexy, very aggressive. Got this RoboCop kind of visor thing happening in the front of the vehicle. Got a lot of great features and that price point. Definitely missing a few features and details that I wish Hyundai would include it and put into this model. It seems like they went three quarters of a mile and this kind of skimped on that last quarter mile. This probably cost wise, I know they're trying to compete with all the midsize sedans. I think they wanted to keep it under that 40K, you know, MSRP. I'm guessing that's why they cut back on some of these things. But I know the international version does have some of these other features and things that I talked about in this video. I think it's definitely something you should test drive and check out if you're in the market for a midsize sedan. The design of this vehicle, the features it offers and the performance, totally a great buy. I think it's definitely a contender. Don't mark it off. I think Hyundai has come a long way. If you were to cover up the Hyundai sign and Sonata and somebody drove this car up to you, you probably would have no idea it was a Hyundai. And I think they did a great job in this car. Now, only time will tell how it holds up over the next few years, but unfortunately, you don't really know how that's gonna go with <laughs> any car, so we'll just have to wait and see. Other than that, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. Please don't forget to subscribe, smash that like button, put some comments below, and I'll see you in the next one.